15. Okay, K. Everything looks good. So let's get that cast off. Yay. Shoyo clapped his hands. No more being your gentleman's valet. The doctor laughed. He'd met Shoyo once before during a checkup. And enjoyed his humor. He'll still have to take it easy. Except in therapy. In therapy. I expect you to kick his butt. Will do. Doc. No worries. I've always wanted to play a drill sergeant who's both hated and loved by his new recruits. I think it's mostly just hate those poor kids feel. Whatever. We'll hit the army surplus on the way home and get me a drill sergeant's hat. Maybe the whole outfit. K groaned. Good God. Doc. You've created a monster. A few minutes later, a nurse stepped into the room with a cast saw. This won't take but a minute and you'll be free again. K put his hand on the nurse's arm. Stopping her. Will you save the autograph? I think it might be valuable someday. K's eyes met Shoyo's. They shared a smile. K looked away first. His cheeks reddening. Do you watch soaps? Yes. I have to record them and then catch up on my days off. Who signed your cast? Shoyo Hanata. He pointed across the room. Over there in the corner. The nurse immediately stopped what she was doing and turned around. Brandon Cartwright. Shoyo gave her a little wave. Hi. K grinned from ear to ear. Happy to give the spotlight to the man who had cared for him so well. The man who would soon be thrown into a very big spotlight. Lift those beans. K Tsukishima. Shoyo was pushing K to finish a set of exercises with nothing but a small bean bag in his hand. Are you telling me you can't lift beans? Fuck you. K threw the bean bag with his good arm. It didn't even come close to hitting Shoyo. Landing in the deep end of the pool. Fuck me? Yeah. You're way too weak and you obviously aren't so proficient with your left hand. Shoyo shook his head dramatically. Such a pity. He motioned with his head toward the pool. That bean bag isn't going to save itself. I hate you so much sometimes. K said with a scowl. No, you hate being weak. You hate being out of control. You hate that you can't get on your bike and ride up that mountain. So take your clothes off and save that bean bag. Take off my clothes? Ha, huh. nice try. Drill sergeant. K plopped into a chair at the table and drank from his bottle of water. Shoyo walked over to the table. Hey, that's what Jillian Michaels would tell you to do. She'd say, K Sukishima, you hot motherfucker. Take off your damn clothes and save that fucking beanbag. I'm tired. And you're bossy as hell. It's getting old. He unconsciously rubbed his sore arm. Fine. You can have a break. But we have to do these exercises before dinner. Shoyo pulled up a chair. He grabbed a bottle of lotion off the table and gently massaged Kay's arm. Is the housekeeper done yet? She has a name. It's Vera. And she'll be done in a few minutes. Kay closed his eyes and moaned, clearly enjoying the way Shoyo was working his muscles. Are you sure she hasn't taken any photos of the house? Positive. It's a very reputable company she works for. And she does a great job. Much better than I do. Compared to you, I'm a total slob. I had a stalker. That's why I'm so obsessed with privacy. Shoyo's hand ran down Kay's arm to his hand. God, that must have been. Grace never understood my fears. She never respected our privacy. I hated her for that. It was the first time Shoyo had heard Kay say his ex-wife's name out loud. He wasn't sure what to say. So he stayed quiet. It happened when Grace was shooting a movie in Montana. The guy got into my bedroom when I was asleep. I left the balcony door open by accident. And when I woke up. He was standing over me taking photos on his phone. Oh, God. Shoyo squeezed Kay's hand. It turns out the guy had been watching me for years. They found all sorts of pictures and crazy love letters in his apartment. Jesus. It's no wonder, I don't trust anyone's show. I know it's wrong. I know I'm keeping everyone at bay now. Even people who used to be close friends. Kay shook his head at himself. I renovated this house. And none of the cast and crew have ever seen it. The people I work with every day don't even know where I live. I'm so sorry. Shoyo was unsure what else to say. I know that doesn't jive with you waltzing into my life and me just letting you move right in. Will you keep rubbing my arm? 
It feels so good. Shoyo poured more lotion into his hands. Or letting me, of all people, take care of you when you were your most vulnerable. Kay shrugged. I know, it was a gut feeling. And really, it was either you or a stranger. So, I went with. Vera poked her head out of the door. I'm done. Mr. Hanata, may I have my phone back? Shoyo shot Kay a sly grin as he stood up and wiped his hands off on a towel. Apparently, I don't trust anyone, either, he whispered. He walked over to Vera, pulling a phone out of his back pocket. Here you go, I'll walk you out. Gut feeling, Kay said with a smile. And action, I can't believe you. Colin followed Leo into his office and slammed the door behind him. Leo tossed a file on his desk and sat down. I thought it went well. You were flirting with opposing counsel during a deposition. Is that what you'd like me to learn from you? You're exaggerating, am I? Colin shouted. Leo noticed his assistant turn and look at them so he got up and closed the blinds. Calm down, he warned. She's a friend. Oh, she's a friend. So that must make it okay? What is this really about? Colin? It's unprofessional. And you'll be lucky if the judge doesn't notice you and your sex eyes. Sex eyes? Leo asked in amusement. He walked over to Colin. And just what are my sex eyes saying to you right now? Colin tried to hold Leo's gaze but had to look away. His chest was heaving with anger as he made eye contact again. She's an ass. You deserve better. Leo went back to his desk. Keeping his back to Colin. We're done for the day. You can go. He kept his back turned until Colin left. Then he turned around and leaned on his desk while he stared at the closed door. Cut. JJ took his copy of the script out of his back pocket. Was sex eyes in the script? The script supervisor stepped forward. Reading from the script. It's unprofessional and you'll be lucky if the judge doesn't notice your antics. Yeah. Nothing about sex eyes. Shoyo threw his hands up in the air. He has sex eyes. Okay? It just came out. Attention. Everyone. K waved at the crew. Trying to get their attention. If anyone calls me sex eyes. They're fired. JJ laughed. Hey. Maybe we'll keep the sex eyes. But let's do another take. Just in case. K turned to Shoyo and whispered. Good one. Oh. I wasn't making that up. Shoyo replied. They say you wanna fuck me. K's mouth hung open. You asked what your sex eyes are saying to me. And that's what they're saying. You desperately want to bend me over that desk and. K folded his good arm over the fake cast he now had to wear and smiled at Shoyo. Waiting for him to finish. Shoyo didn't know that the makeup artist was standing right behind him. Waiting to pat the shine off his forehead. Laura cleared her throat. Causing Shoyo to close his eyes in embarrassment. He turned around. Sorry. Laura. Laura usually kept her South Carolina accent in check for the Hollywood crowd. But at that moment it managed to come out in full force as she laughed. Honey. Don't you dare be sorry. Whatever this thing is that you two have. It's hot. 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 Not to mention funny. Ratings are gonna shoot through the roof and that means I'll still have a job next year. So you two can sex eyes each other till you get glaucoma and I won't be anything but grateful. The following day, JJ was giving Shoyo direction as they prepared for a scene. You're going for gentle here. Colin is feeling contrite about their argument and Leo needs to sense that. He needs to believe Colin is starting to care about not only his job but also him. Shoyo put on his character's coat. A turning point? JJ pointed his script at him and winked. Perfect turn of phrase. JJ walked away and K took his place. This is the one we need to kill. He whispered. Make it sexy. Shoyo winked at him. Try not to get turned on. JJ clapped his hands. Quiet. Everyone. We're rolling. And action. Colin rang Leo's doorbell. Leo opened the door but didn't greet him. He turned around. Walked into the kitchen. And poured himself a cup of coffee. Colin took off his coat and sat it by the door. He walked up behind Leo and paused for a second. Good morning. His greeting was soft and apologetic. Leo turned around and held out his arm. Good morning. Leo mimicked Colin's soft tone. As Colin buttoned Leo's cuff. 
He noticed that his shirt was misbuttoned. He pointed at it. Yur. Leo looked down. Oh, crap. I've got it. Colin slowly and gently unbuttoned the shirt, revealing Leo's chest. His breath caught as he rebuttoned the shirt. Leo's chest heaved as if he was having trouble breathing. You usually wear your cross with this. The chain broke. Colin made eye contact. I'm sorry. It's just a chain. Leo turned back around and poured cream into his coffee. He took a step forward. No, I mean I'm sorry. For last night. Leo turned slightly, looking over his shoulder. Do over? Yeah. Colin replied. Relief evident in his voice. There's this little place I found when I first moved here. Great margaritas. We could. Maybe sometime. Leo turned back around and smiled. Cute glasses. He took a sip of his coffee. Keeping his eyes firmly set on Colin. Colin touched his black glasses. Feeling shy that he was wearing them. My eyes. They're too dry for contacts today. Leo held the stare a little longer than any normal person would. After what seemed like an eternity. He broke the connection. Turning to get another cup out of the cupboard. He poured more coffee. Let's work here until lunch. Colin breathed another sigh of relief and took the cup from Leo. Yeah. I'd like that. And cut. Reset. JJ paused a minute to make sure his direction was heard and then turned to Shoyo. That last line. Right. Sorry. It was supposed to be. Sounds good. My bad. I'll hit it on the next take. No. No. It's good. Your way is good. Keep it. And gentlemen? K and Shoyo both turned to JJ. Great scene. JJ quickly abandoned the conversation. Moving on to managing the crew. K turned his attention back to Shoyo. You look adorable in those glasses. Really? Shoyo playfully replied. Because I could totally wear them to bed for you. You know, when we. Hush. K said in a loud whisper as he looked around. People will think. Isn't that what we're going for? People thinking something that's not true? Not yet. The characters first. Then us. Shoyo nodded his understanding. Got it. I'm kind of getting a complex. Though. You're the only man who's ever had to fake it with me. Yes. Well. K tried hard to suppress his smile. Not wanting to give Shoyo the satisfaction of laughing at his joke. I actually have no comeback for that. You're thinking about it. Aren't you? How good it could be. I see that blush on your cheeks. Shoyo teased. K shook his head as he walked away. Since they'd decided to turn up the heat with Leo and Colin. Shoyo had turned it up in real life as well. K reminded himself that Shoyo had a tendency to stay in character. Then he reminded himself again. 16. K gave Shoyo a reassuring look. Dan. One of the producers for Leo's appeal. Had just asked the two of them to stay behind for a few minutes after a production meeting. He waited until the last person had closed the door behind them before he turned to them. Thanks for staying. I just have something I need to run by you quickly. He tapped his pen on the table. Eyeing them both for a moment. As you know. The first two episodes of the season have aired and the feedback on Shoyo's character has been stellar. He waited for Kay's reaction. That's great. Kay glanced at Shoyo. Was this the moment they had been waiting for? Were they going to take Leo and Colin's relationship to a new level? All the signs were pointing in that direction. Subtle script changes, along with the whisperings on set regarding their great rapport had them both feeling optimistic. Bree has been pushing for a romantic arc between Jane and Colin. Dan said, still tapping his pen and looking apprehensive. Ugh. Bree Tennyson. She was the pompous ass who played the DA. She was a classically trained stage actor. A fact she never let anyone forget. Shoyo got a sour look on his face. Kay laughed. Bree has tried to get a romantic arc with every male on the show. Including me. As if Leo would ever, he hates the woman with a passion. Dan stopped tapping his pen but didn't respond. Kay leaned forward in his chair. Please tell me you're not considering this Dan. Colin is gay. Remember? Dan chuckled. He didn't start out that way. The writers wrote that in after you'd shot a couple of episodes. Besides. Don't you think it would be kind of fun to watch Dent try to get in Colin's? Getting no reaction from them but a glare. 
Dan cleared his throat. I guess not. He picked up his pen and started tapping it again. Look, you might hate the thing I really brought you in to talk about even more. But just hear me out. Okay? Kay leaned back in his chair, breathing a sigh of relief. For a moment there, he thought Dan was seriously considering giving in to his co-star's stupid ideas. He'd seen the way Brie watched Shoyo on the set. She was always right there in the background, whether she had scenes with them or not. He'd felt protective of Shoyo when she was around and it might have taken a fight but he would have done whatever it took to make sure that storyline never came to fruition. He resisted the urge to pat Shoyo's hand, letting him know everything would be fine. Instead, he gave him a slight smile and turned his attention back to Dan. We're listening. Dan took a deep breath. Okay, so, here's the thing. You two have amazing chemistry and our viewers are talking about it. He hesitated for a second as he eyed Kay. And we had a thought. Shoyo covered his mouth, trying to hide his smile while Kay waited for Dan to tell them what they already knew. What if, they fall in love? Dan narrowed his eyes, trying to read the two men. Shoyo tried to remain stoic. He turned to Kay, giving him the chance to respond first. What if Leo and Colin fall in love? Dan nodded his eyes darting between the two of them. Yes. Kay tried his hardest to keep a straight face. What are you hearing from the viewers? They love your chemistry. And honestly, I've never seen two actors smolder the way you two do. It's like you're two seconds away from jumping each other's bones at all times. Even when you're yelling at each other. He chuckled. And there's a hashtag. It started trending three days ago. A hashtag? Shoyo finally let himself smile. What is it? Well, there are several actually, but my favorite is hashtag just kiss already but there's also hashtag get it Jordan and hashtag break my arm. Kay burst out laughing. Hashtag break my arm? Seriously? Dan smiled. Seriously. Kay looked at Shoyo. Apparently, we have chemistry. It's his sex eyes Dan. Shoyo wagged his eyebrows. They just draw people in. Dan laughed. Kay. Will you please use your sex eyes to convince Shoyo that this is a good idea? He doesn't have to. Dan, I'm in. Kay? Kay paused for a long moment. Just when he thought Dan was about to take his suggestion back. He said, I think it's a great idea. All I ask is that I have some say with how things unfold physically. Dan breathed a visible sigh of relief. You already have that. And we'll make sure you're comfortable with the storyline. Kay nodded his approval. Okay, let's see what the writers come up with. How's the arm? Dan asked, his tone sounding much lighter. Better. Kay instinctively rubbed his upper arm. It still hurt more than he was willing to admit to anyone. The doctor says I can't ride yet. Which is ridiculous. But I'll get there. Good. Shoyo, we'll need to extend your contract. We'll discuss the details with your agent. Shoyo stood up and shook Dan's hand. Thank you. It's been great working with all of you. You'll have a few days off. And then we'll go full speed ahead again. And in the meantime, all the usual confidentiality applies. Don't you two dare let this get out, he said, pointing at both of them. Dan left the room. Kay and Shoyo looked at each other. We should just fist bump and save the real celebration for later. Agreed, Kay said standing up and opening the door. Just act casual. We'll scream when we get in the car. Shoyo whispered, or maybe wait until we're off the lot. On the freeway. We'll scream on the freeway. Shoyo held up his beer bottle for a toast. Here's to us. So far so good. It was Shoyo's idea to stop at a little roadside bar on the way home. Not Kay's. He didn't frequent roadside bars any more than he shopped for his own groceries. A delivery service took care of that. But Shoyo went on and on about wanting to stop. So here they were, sitting in a very public place. The realization that their plan was officially being set in motion was hitting Kay hard. But he wasn't about to admit that he was scared to death. So he smiled and tapped Shoyo's bottle. I'm praying for a good storyline, we'll make sure it's good. Shoyo looked around for the waiter. What I'm praying for right now is a taco. They make the best street tacos here. 
Kay eyed Shoyo for a moment. I bet I know what you really want. Oh yeah? You're a mind reader now? Shoyo finally caught the attention of the waiter. Yeah. Half a dozen al pastor with extra green sauce on the side. He turned back to Kay. What were you saying? Kay took another sip of beer. Don't you want to call your ex? I mean, this is what you've been waiting for, right? A good paying job again? Get the love of your life back and all that business? Shoyo shook his head. I don't want any distractions. I want to make sure we do this right so you can be out and have the life you want. You deserve it. Kay processed the information for a moment. Then it dawned on him. You don't trust him. Look, Tobio's great in a million ways. He's brilliant and beautiful and damn funny. But do I trust him? No, not anymore. Not with my career. And not with yours. Lesson learned on that front. He can find out I'm a regular right along with the rest of America. Kay wasn't sure if he felt relieved or disappointed. Maybe a little bit of both. In some ways, it was easier knowing Shoyo was in love with someone else. Then again, it horrified him to think that Shoyo would actually take fucking Tobio back. Yeah, that's right. Kay had taken to calling Shoyo's ex, fucking Tobio, in his head. In a hurry, he'd just call him, F.T. Shoyo was as close to a best friend as Kay had. His instinct and it seemed a reasonable one was to slap the asshole who broke Shoyo's heart in two. We should meet with Tadashi tonight. Kay said, changing the subject. Give him an update and make a plan for the next step. Shoyo's shoulders dropped. Can't it just be us tonight? I don't want to do anything but celebrate. And besides, we have the whole weekend to make plans. Come on, Kay. This is huge. We did it. Shoyo slapped the table a few times with excitement. Drawing the attention of the people sitting a few tables over. Kay's happiness was overshadowed by fear. This would be a huge step for him. Coming out to the world. It wasn't just the show he was worried about. It was his entire life. Leo's appeal wouldn't stay on the air forever. Every show ended eventually. And after that. What would being an out gay man do to his career? What would it do to him? Had he really thought this all through? The ramifications? The unknown scared him to death. Isn't it a little too soon to celebrate? I guess I feel like we're rounding the last corner and now we have to really bring it to the finish line. He hoped Shoyo would buy that. Instead of having to reveal his true fears, Shoyo grabbed Kay's hand. And we will. Let's go home tonight and watch the first few episodes together. I hate watching myself on screen. You know that. Why? You're a brilliant actor. That made Kay smile, so are you. Yeah, Shoyo grinned. It's almost like I've been doing this acting thing all my life. Kay winced at that. Sho, I hope you know I never meant to belittle you. I loved you from the first second I saw you. No kidding, at Starbucks? Shoyo asked with a touch of sarcasm. I mean, I loved your acting from the very first scene. I'm trying to apologize here. If I admit that I have a whole new respect for soap actors. Will you forgive me for all the other stuff? Shoyo raised an eyebrow. Other stuff? All the nursemaid stuff. Kay felt embarrassed now that he'd asked so much of Shoyo. It was too much to ask of you. Shoyo took a long, slow sip of his beer. Keeping his gaze firmly set on Kay. He set his beer down and leaned forward on the table. Go home with me and watch the first two episodes. And then maybe I'll think about forgiving you. Shoyo was doing it again. Flirting with his eyes. Kay took Shoyo's beer and set it on the other side of the table. You're driving. And you're a total buzzkill. Shoyo said with a wink. It unnerved Kay when Shoyo flirted. Because he didn't know what was real and what wasn't. He saw the same looks from Shoyo on the set. But that was acting. So. What was this? Should he flirt back? Because it was all just harmless nonsense. Or should he put a stop to it? Keep the lines clear and let Shoyo know there are some he just couldn't cross. Even if Kay sometimes wanted him to. Kay decided to take a different tack and bring up the man he'd had his eye on for a few years now. Surely. That would change the tone of their conversation. Can I ask you a question? A serious question? You took away my beer. Might as well finish the job. 
What if the men I find attractive don't feel the same way? I mean, gay guys have types, right? Shoyo dropped his face into his hands. Oh my god. He scrubbed his face and clasped his hands together. What the fuck are you talking about? Kay's walls immediately went up. He wanted to change the tone. But he wasn't expecting that reaction. Forget I asked. I mean. God forbid I ask a sincere question. Shoyo reached across the table. Resting his hand on Kay's arm. Okay. Wait. Just. Wait. Sometimes. I forget that you have no experience with men. His eyes widened in realization. Are we talking about Gene Strong? No. K shook his head. But then he nodded. Maybe. Shoyo eyed him for a moment. So. K Tsukishima's type is the strong. Power suit? I hope you like being a bottom. K had never thought about it that way. A bottom? He furrowed his brow. What? Jean's kind of like your character on the show. Leo Harden. Kicking ass and taking names. Is that what you're attracted to? K chuckled. I guess so. Shoyo grinned. Is that why you don't like watching yourself on TV? You're afraid you'll turn yourself on? K threw his napkin at Shoyo. You're such a goddamn asshole sometimes. Okay. Fine. Shoyo said. Putting up his hands. You want a serious answer? Yes. Even if it might kill you to give me one. Shoyo pulled himself together and cleared his throat. Okay. Yes. Sometimes gay guys do have types. And some are very strict about only dating those types. But honestly. I don't think you have to worry about that. K. Why not? Shoyo sighed so hard he almost groaned. Okay. You're right. It might actually kill me to say this. But I think you're exactly what Gene Strong is looking for. Why would it kill you to say that? Because he's not good enough for you. They stared at each other for a moment. And then K shook his head in confusion. You don't even know him. He's a player. I knew it the minute I met him. You don't want someone who sees you as nothing but arm candy. You want the real thing. True love. Am I wrong? K's jaw flexed. Did Shoyo really think he could ruin K's image of Jean with just a few words? And why would he want to? Why are you telling me this? Shoyo stood up. Come on. If you won't let me celebrate our success here. I'm going home and getting drunk by the pool. K looked around. Searching for their waiter. You ordered tacos. Shoyo leaned on the table and lowered his voice. I don't fucking care about the tacos. And I don't want to talk about Gene Strong on what will probably be the best night of my career. So, if you don't mind. Was that jealousy? God? Was Shoyo actually jealous? K grabbed his hand. Sit down. Your tacos are here. Shoyo sat back down and poured a ton of green sauce on one of the tacos. He was just about to take a bite when someone yelled. Fucking K Tsukishima is in our bar. Shoyo set the taco back down. Shit. The whole place turned and looked at them. A woman sitting a few tables over said. Yep. That's them all right. She held up her phone and took a photo. I got one of them holding hands. Wonder what I could sell it for. She laughed heartily at her joke. Let's get out of here. K dug in his wallet for some cash. Shit. I only have plastic. You two make a handsome couple. The woman said. But this ain't that kind of bar. Why does every damn show have to go gay? Her drinking partner asked. I've watched Leo's appeal for years and he ain't never once showed no interest in men. Now. All of a sudden. He's making googly eyes at that little loudmouth Colin what's his name. We know what's coming down the pike and it ain't good. The woman lifted her beer and took a big swig. As if it somehow solidified her point. K looked at Shoyo. They hadn't held hands. Had they? A feeling of fear gripped him as he mouthed the words. Get me out of here. A man pulled a chair up to their table. Turned it backward. And straddled it. Blocking the other woman's view. Ignore them. He said with a lift of his chin. He took a tortilla chip off Shoyo's plate and munched on it while he kept talking. When she's good and drunk. I'll get her phone and delete the photos. I hate that paparazzi shit. He took another chip as Shoyo and K stared in disbelief. Thank you. K managed to squeak out. Yeah. No problem. The man took off his dirty baseball cap. In fact. 
Most of him looked kind of dirty. Fingernails and all. Much like an auto mechanic would look after a hard day's work. A closer look at the baseball cap told them that's exactly what he was. Jim's Auto Repair. Brandon Cartwright. The man said the name with a wistful tone. Generations. He said the word with a serious look directed at Shoyo. Grandma, he put up a finger. And then another. Mom. Aunt Claudia. My sister. Little Claudia. They're all going to shit a damn brick when I tell them who I had dinner with. He took another chip and dipped it in the green sauce. In fact, they won't believe me. Shoulda known you'd want to chat them up Rufus. The woman behind them chuckled ruefully at her joke. Ruf rolled his eyes and yelled. Tom. Get Charlene another drink on me. Would ya? No problem Roof. Ignore them. Roof said again. Shoyo put out his hand. Roof. Is it? Roof rubbed his hand on his jeans to clean off the tortilla chip dust. Sorry. Pleased to meet you. He shook Shoyo's hand and then reached across the table to Kay. Rufus Mackenzie. My friends call me Roof. Kay took his hand. Hi. Roof. He glanced around. Making sure he had a clear shot to the door. Roof's light green eyes lit up as he smiled at Kay. Looking him in the eye for the first time. My. You're pretty close up. Oh. Good one Roof. One of the women cackled behind them. Is that your best pickup line? Roof blushed relentlessly. His pale skin turning bright red. Tom. Get Wendy a double on me please. Tom laughed. Causing his belly to bounce. Sure thing. Roof. Shoyo bit his lip to keep from laughing while Kay offered a quiet. Thank you. He quickly picked up his beer and took a sip. I don't know why you gentlemen are here. Not that I mind. Roof gave Kay a shy smile. I came here a while back for lunch. Someone told me they had the best tacos in town. And they were right. Ah. Well. Alonzo will be glad to hear that. Roof motioned with his head. He's the cook here. He glanced at the front door where a few guys had just walked in. He leaned in, lowering his voice. Look, lunch is one thing, but this place gets rowdy at night. Charlene and Wendy ain't nothing compared to who'll be walking through that door soon. Thanks for the warning. Kay glared at Shoyo. He didn't have to mouth the words again. Did he? Oh, screw it. He'd say them out loud this time. Get me out of here. Shoyo grabbed his bag, looking for some cash. Thanks. Roof. Do you have a business card? An address I could send a headshot to. With a nice note for the women in your family who watch Light of Day. Roof's eyes lit up again. You'd do that for me? Wow. He pulled a notepad and pen out of his cargo pants pocket and thumbed through the greasy pages looking for a clean one. Cuz they'll just call me a straight up liar if I don't have some proof. Roof's head is in the clouds again. They'll say. Write down their names for me. Claudia, you said? Kay gave him a look that screamed. Seriously? Yeah, my Aunt Claudia, and little Claudia is my sister. Roof finally found a clean page. But the pen didn't work. Shit. He shook the pen, trying to get the ink to flow. Tom, do you have a damn pen? Kay gave Shoyo another look that said, Are you fucking kidding me? Maybe you have a pen? Shoyo asked Kay, pointedly. Kay dug through his bag and handed it across the table. Lovesick Roof took it and gave Kay a swoony smile. Thank you. I'll cherish this forever. Shoyo looked down and rubbed his forehead. Trying to hide his chuckles. Kay hit his leg with his foot. This was not funny. This was getting scary. Three more burly guys had just walked in and good ol' Charlene was already pointing Shoyo and Kay out to them. Roof was quite possibly the slowest rider west of the Mississippi. Carefully spelling out each name. Claudia. Twice of course. Kay couldn't take it. He had to get out of there. He bolted for the door and ran right into a large gentleman twice his size. He grabbed him by the shoulders. Slow down. Little guy. Let me buy you a drink. Kay ran for it. Wait. We were just getting to know each other. The man yelled. He turned and laughed to his friends. Shoyo stood up. He looked at the door Kay had just run through and then at Roof. Hurry. Roof also stood up. What's wrong? Where'd he go? Shoyo threw some money on the table. The address. Roof. He held out his hand. 
The second roof was done. Shoyo ripped the page off of the notebook. Thanks for your help. The roar of Harley engines drowned out Shoyo's call to Kay as four guys on bikes pulled into the small parking lot blinding him with their headlights. He hit the button on the key fob, unlocking the doors to his Range Rover, and made his way across the dark parking lot. The passenger door opened and Kay got in, locking the doors behind him. Shoyo hit the button again and got in. He took a deep breath and reached for Kay, who was obviously shaken. Don't touch me. Shoyo pulled his hand back. You're fine. Everything's fine. Kay's hands were shaking. I'm not fine. You took me to a biker bar. It's not a biker bar. It's just a bar. With really good tacos. Shoyo kept his voice even. And you are fine. Nothing happened. And P.S. There's nothing wrong with bikers. That was stupid and careless. What were you thinking? Shoyo pulled out onto the main road. I was thinking that I wanted to have a beer and tacos. Kay was seething inside. One of the prices of fame. In case you hadn't noticed. Is that you can't just go out into the world like normal people. You have to think things through. You have to plan an escape route. Why do you think I only go to high-end places where there's security and a valet? I guess I just thought you consider yourself above it all. Shoyo said it with an amused little smile. Which only angered Kay more. Fuck you, honey. Shoyo said with a laugh. I would have protected you, honey? Kay turned away and stared out the passenger window. Where was the fiery, defensive, loud-mouthed Shoyo? That Shoyo would be fighting back. Telling Kay to buck up. Live in the real world. He'd be pissed off that he didn't get to take even one bite of those damn tacos he loves so much. This version of Shoyo was disconcerting. Honey? Since when did they have pet names for one another? They were both tired and overworked. Maybe that was it. Maybe Shoyo was just too tired to fight. And maybe Kay had overreacted. All he wanted to do now was get back behind those big walls and that heavy security gate and crawl into bed and watch a movie. Alone. Unfortunately. The way traffic was moving. His bed was at least 45 minutes away. Just as he laid his head back against the headrest. Shoyo's phone rang. He picked it up before Shoyo could. Keep driving. It just says Steve. Steve? That's my producer in New York. Put it on speaker. Kay sighed. The last thing he wanted to do was listen in on a phone call. Fine. But stay in one lane while you're talking. He reluctantly tapped the button and held the phone up. Steve? Hey. Long time no talk. Shoyo rolled his eyes at Kay. Yeah. We haven't talked since you fired me. Well. That's why I'm calling. We want to bring you back on the show. Full arc. Kay's eyes widened. He stared at Shoyo. Waiting for a reaction. Why? I'm still gay Steve. That hasn't changed. We've regretted letting you go. The show isn't the same without you. Is that an apology? It's an offer. Come back to New York and we'll have a sit down. We want to expand your role on the show. I think you'll really like what we have in mind. We'll even let you choose the actor who will play your son. My son? Brandon doesn't have a son. It was when he was 18. Right about the time you took a few years off to go to college. He's a teenager now. He comes to the hospital after a car accident and you operate on him. Not realizing he's your son. It's only when there's an emergency and you're the only match. Kay covered his mouth to keep from laughing. So, no apology? Shoyo deadpanned, interrupting him. We'll talk when you get here. No, Steve. We won't. Shoyo motioned for Kay to end the call. You're going to shut him down? Just like that? What about your lost son? Shoyo sighed. Okay, yeah. A few months ago, I would have raced back to New York for that meeting and embraced that storyline with every fiber of my being. So, what's different? Shoyo turned to him, looking perplexed by the question. Everything's different. I have you. I have a primetime show. I'm building a life here. A life I kind of like. Except for this traffic. Kay didn't reply. He'd already destroyed Shoyo's celebratory mood. If he actually articulated all the thoughts running through his confused mind. He'd obliterate their friendship. Shoyo was right. Kay was a total buzzkill. This wasn't how it was supposed to go. 
None of this was part of the plan he and Tadashi had started with. It was supposed to be simple, straightforward, not messy. Shoyo was messy. Things could go horribly wrong. Like tonight. A biker bar? A fucking biker bar? As the security gate opened and Shoyo pulled into the driveway, Kay blurted out one of the things he'd been thinking about. You might need to move out. What? Why? Shoyo put the car in park. He was thrown by the suggestion. What the hell are you talking about? Won't it seem weird that you're already living in my home with me? When we're supposed to accidentally fall in love on set. I don't live in your home. I live in your guest house. And we've already established that we're friends. Not just co-workers. Shoyo stared at Kay. Waiting for a reply. What is this really about? Kay shifted in his seat. He knew this wouldn't end well. But he couldn't take it back. I just think it might be better if you move out. But I'll talk to Tadashi about it. And in the meantime, you'll tell Tadashi what you really want. So just be honest. Why do you want me to go? Kay felt confused and worried and scared. He was a jumbled up mess of emotions and he didn't know what to do with any of them. He couldn't read Shoyo. He couldn't tell what was sincere and what was fake. And he didn't dare ask. What he needed was some distance. I don't know what I want. I just know that it feels like maybe you're getting a little too cozy. Shoyo shook his head in confusion. Too. Cozy. What does that mean? Too nice. Too helpful. Too friendly. Too what exactly? K shrugged. Too close. I guess. We were going to keep this professional and you're blurring the lines. Shoyo's mouth fell open. Why? Because I wanted to go home and celebrate with you? Just you and me. That's what you said. Which means what to you? That I want to mount you on the kitchen island. I don't know. Do you? K shouted back. Shoyo sighed in frustration as he got out of the car. There's that arrogance again. All I meant is that I don't feel like spending the evening with a freaking publicist. I have that in common with pretty much everyone on earth. K met him at the front of the car. Blocking his way. Am I wrong? You're an asshole. That's what you are. Shoyo pushed his way past K. Shoyo. Shoyo turned around. I don't want more. K. I was just starting to feel like myself again. Instead of all walled up and not trusting anyone in my life. God forbid we both get a friend out of this. Maybe that came off as too cozy. And maybe the truth is. You like me angry. Is that it? You like me all bound up in a knot. Ready to explode? Is that who you want me to be? It makes you feel better if I'm more fucked up than you are? K shrugged his shoulders again. I guess I just want you to be the person I hired to do the job. Yeah? Well, I don't want to be that person anymore. He was. Shoyo took a deep breath. Never mind. He headed for the side gate instead of going into the house. Hey, what about celebrating? Call Tadashi. He's the one you want to be with anyway. Or, better yet, call Jean Strong. He's fucking perfect for you. Shoyo punched in the gate code and disappeared into the backyard. K dropped his bag at his feet and sat on the sofa. The house felt dead quiet without Shoyo there. He picked up the remote and turned on some music. Trying to fill the silence. Was it a mistake to want to maintain a certain amount of distance between them? Was it cruel to want Shoyo to keep his snarky, sarcastic attitude, even if it was born out of anger and frustration because his life had fallen apart? It was easier. That's why Kay wanted Shoyo to stay the way he was. It was easier to not fall madly in love with him if every other word out of his mouth was fuck this and fuck that. He went to the back door and grabbed the handle, thinking he should go out there and apologize. But the light in the guest house wasn't on. Maybe Shoyo had already gone to bed. Or maybe he was showering off the biker bar. Kay locked the door and slowly made his way upstairs. He'd apologize in the morning when Shoyo had calmed down. Over coffee. Everything sounded better when coffee was involved. Shoyo sat in the dark. He wiped his eyes. Frustrated with himself for crying on what should have been one of the happiest nights of his life. They'd done it. They'd actually made Leo and Colin into a couple that the viewers loved. And Shoyo was now playing what would soon be a major role on a primetime show. Life could not have been better.
So why the fuck was he crying? Shoyo picked up his phone and opened his airline app. 17. K woke up late, feeling grumpy and sore. He sat up and stuffed a cracker in his mouth, then swallowed a pain pill. Normally, Shoyo would have been in there by now, plopped on the bed next to him, asking what sounded good for breakfast. A toasted bagel and coffee. K said to the empty room. He sat on the edge of the bed for several minutes, regretting what he'd said to Shoyo the night before. It was mean, just throwing it out there the way he had. That Shoyo might have to leave his home. And go where? Where would Shoyo move to on such short notice? Back to that shitty hotel in Hollywood he'd stayed at before? K picked up his phone and tapped Shoyo's number. No one answered, so he hung up. Afraid he'd stumble over an apology and screw it up if he tried to do it over voicemail. A better plan would be to put on his bathing suit. Sit in the hot tub. Loosen his muscles up. Drink a cup of coffee and then try to make amends. The guest house door hadn't opened. Kay stared at it from the hot tub. Willing it to open. After his designated ten minutes. He got out and went to the door. Knocking twice. Shoyo? He knocked again and punched in the code on the door lock. Shoyo? K stood there in his swim trunks, dripping water on the tiled floor and staring at an empty guest house. The bed looked like it hadn't been slept in. In fact, the place looked spotless. Usually there were clothes strewn on the floor and draped over the furniture. Shoyo wasn't the tidiest person. K had noticed. He looked behind him and noticed that there were no shoes by the door. Shoyo always left his flip-flops by the door. Shit. K whispered. He went into the bathroom and his shoulders fell as he let out a big sigh. He was gone. Shoyo was gone. And so were all of his things. K sat on a lounger by the pool with his phone to his ear. Hey. Where? He sucked in air. This was affecting him far more than he thought it would. Where are you? Call me. He tossed his phone on the table and wrapped his arms around himself. Damn it, he whispered, and then he said it louder. Damn it, Shoyo. He couldn't sit there forever in his bathing suit, waiting for a damn phone call. So he put on his bathrobe and went into the kitchen. He'd make breakfast. Maybe that toasted bagel he'd wanted when he woke up would taste good. With a super thin layer of peanut butter and honey, the way Shoyo made it. Shoyo. He made everything better, even bagels. K sat at the kitchen table, one leg tucked under the other, his head in his hand, waiting for his phone to ring. His coffee was cold. His bagel hadn't been touched. He'd yet to put clothes on. Why should he when no one was going to see him? But that wasn't like K. He had a routine. Exercise. Breakfast. Shower. Emails. Etc. Etc. Fucking etc. The broken arm had ruined everything. And Tadashi's stupid idea. God. Why did he listen to him? But it wasn't all Tadashi. The truth was. K didn't want to come out alone. He wanted someone on his arm. Even if that someone wasn't necessarily in love with him. Or vice versa. He was afraid of all the speculation. All the reasons people would come up with for his sudden lifestyle change. Was he just sick of women? Did his divorce ruin him for women? Was he just trying something new? Spiraling out of control or seeking attention? No. K wanted the world's first impression of him as a gay man to be one of having found true love. Real love. Sure. It'd be temporary love. But wasn't it always in Hollywood? This wasn't Tadashi's fault any more than it was Shoyo's. K had brought this all on himself. He picked up his phone again. Tadashi. I think I messed up. As K said the words. Another call came through. He looked at his phone. I'll call you back. No. Just let me call you back. He stood up. Pushing his chair back with his leg. Show. Shoyo. God. Where are you? K couldn't hide the desperation in his voice. Your stuff. It's all gone. Yeah. I thought I'd save you the trouble of having to mull it over with Tadashi. I moved out. K's eyes shuttered closed. Where are you? He gently asked. New York. I took the red eye out last night. K's eyes popped back open. What? I didn't hear you leave last night. I tried to be quiet. So, why are you in New York? K already knew the answer. 
the ex-boyfriend, he had successfully managed to push Shoyo back into Tobio's arms. K for the win. I'm tying up loose ends. Renting out my apartment. Seeing some friends. My dad. Stuff like that. Oh, I see. What do you need K? Um, you. Back here with me. Have you seen Tobio? Yeah. He picked me up. K went outside. He needed room to pace. How did it go? What do you mean how did it go? I mean, I don't know what I mean. He'd love to meet you. Huge fan of yours. K stopped pacing. Please tell me you're not taking him back. Why? Because it's wrong what he did. Shoyo, since when do you care? K threw a hand in the air. I care, okay? You know I care about you. I know you're afraid of me. K shook his head in confusion. Whatever. Just remember what he did and how it made you feel. We all have weak moments. Weak moments? Is that what you call someone who dumps you the second you lose your show? Is it called a weak moment when someone kicks you while you're down? That's a bit dramatic. I'm a fucking actor. It's my job to be dramatic. K shouted. Shoyo got his coffee from the barista and found a quiet corner. What do you need K? I'm kind of busy right now. Don't hang up. Look, I feel bad about last night. I know I hurt your feelings. And I know I said you should probably move out. But now that you're gone, it feels wrong. Don't worry, nothing's changed. We're still good as far as the show goes. As well as the other thing. The contract. What about us? Are we good? I just told you. Nothing's changed. K started pacing again. I don't believe you. I can hear it in your voice. You're mad. K. What do you want me to say? That you'll move back in. I just panicked for a second. But I'm over it. Tobio just walked in. I have to go. K heard a voice say. Hello. Beautiful. And then Shoyo's voice. Hey. Then the phone went dead. Fuck. K picked up his water bottle and threw it as hard as he could. Then doubled over in pain. He plopped down on the end of a lounge chair. Cradling his arm. He stared blankly as the tears started to fall. 18. K couldn't spend another day sulking around his very clean but very empty house. He'd spent the previous day scrubbing every toilet. Every flat surface. Repositioning every hanger in his closet. It didn't help. He was still so fucking alone he could hear the house creak. And Shoyo was with Tobio. And it was all his fault. God. He groaned over his cup of coffee. Stupid. He was stupid. Shoyo just wanted to have fun at that bar. Let loose a little. Their lives are hard right now. With the heavy shooting schedule. Why couldn't K have seen that? Why did he have to turn it into something underhanded? As if Shoyo was some big walking ulterior motive? He turned on the sound system. Cranking it up with Shoyo's playlist. Who puts Mary J. Blige and Taylor Swift on the same playlist? K smiled as you plus me filtered through the speakers. He poured himself a cup of coffee and stood at the window overlooking the pool. Thinking about the time he'd caught Shoyo dancing in the kitchen while he wiped down the counters. Shoyo wasn't embarrassed. Because when did Shoyo ever get embarrassed? No. He had taken K's hand and danced with him. Twirling him around until they were both dizzy and had to hold on to each other so they didn't fall over. Shoyo was sunshine. K blinked away his tears. And blinked harder when he saw movement in the guest house. He almost dropped his coffee cup when he saw Shoyo step out and shuffle toward the main house in his robe and slippers. K set his cup down and stood at the table. Trying to look casual. He put a hand on his hip. No. That didn't look casual. He stuffed both hands in his jeans pockets. Shoyo opened the door and stood there for a second. Staring at K. You look like hell. So do you. K furrowed his brow. Because Shoyo really did look like hell. When did you, um. K watched Shoyo pour himself a cup of coffee and shuffle back outside. His heart was beating so hard. He covered his chest with his hand. Shoyo was home. And K wanted to cry again. Tears of joy this time. He took a few breaths and tried to smooth out his hair. Then went outside. He knocked on Shoyo's door and poked his head in. Are you okay? Shoyo was already back in bed. Sipping on his coffee. Don't come too close. I think I'm coming down with something. 
K ignored the advice. He sat on the bed and checked Shoyo's temperature, resting the back of his hand on his forehead. You're burning up. First class was full, and you know they put all the sick people in economy. Shoyo shivered. I feel cold. Do you think it could be Ebola? Or bubonic plague? K suppressed a chuckle. Now who's being dramatic? I'll be right back. He stepped outside, smiling from ear to ear. Shoyo was back and he was making his usual silly jokes. What a relief. A few minutes later, K came back with a box of supplies and Yachi's medical kit. He put a temperature strip on Shoyo's forehead. What symptoms do you have? Headache? Nausea? Headache? Chills? Achy muscles? Shoyo said, using the sickliest voice he could conjure up. What do you think it is nurse? K looked at his watch while he pretended to check Shoyo's pulse. It's that time of year. Maybe you caught something on the plane. He took the stethoscope out of the bag and pushed Shoyo's robe aside. Then slid the stethoscope under his t-shirt. Shoyo looked down at his chest. What are you trying to do? K put a finger on his mouth. Shish. He listened closely to Shoyo's heartbeat. Then took the stethoscope out of his ears and threw it around his neck. It sounds like bacterial meningitis. You have one, maybe two days to live. But, I'm, pregnant. K nodded and tried not to laugh out loud. He put his hand on Shoyo's shoulder. The baby will survive, but you won't. Who should I call to collect your child? Shoyo sat up and grabbed K's sleeve. I have no one nurse ratchet. No one. Who will take care of my baby? K gave Shoyo a pretend slap across the face. Calm down. You'll upset the baby. I will take care of your child. It will have a good life with me. I will love it like my own child. Come to think of it. I might even be the father. Shoyo grabbed onto K's shoulders. Oh thank you nurse. I can die peacefully. Knowing that my child will have both a mother and a father. K pushed Shoyo back down onto the bed. Just relax now, honey. I'll go get a knife. Shoyo grabbed his head and started writhing on the bed. Adios mio. Adios and sayonara to you too. Shoyo covered his mouth to stifle his laughter. K picked up the cup of coffee. I'll get you some orange juice. Coffee isn't what you need right now. And an extra blanket? I'm freezing. And something to reduce the fever. K stood there for a moment. Shoyo looked like hell, with his bloodshot eyes, pale skin, and chapped lips. But it didn't matter. K's heart felt full again. And his big, empty house was no longer empty. Just like Shoyo had done on several occasions to him. K bent down and gently kissed his forehead. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'm in no condition to travel. In my condition, Shoyo mumbled his eyes slowly closing, once K had Shoyo medicated and tucked in under an extra blanket. He went to the other side of the bed and lay down next to him. He grabbed the remote off the table and turned on the television. What'll it be, Dr. Phil or Days of Our Lives? Shoyo rolled onto his side, facing K with his eyes closed. Neither, and you don't have to stay here with me. K rolled onto his side and ran his fingers through Shoyo's hair. How many nights did you lie next to me and talk to me until I forgot about the pain and fell asleep? Many. Okay then, let me be here for you. You paid me to be with you. I'll send you a bill. Shoyo opened his eyes. I can't afford you. What are you talking about? You're a regular on a hit show now. And you're getting a raise. Things are looking up. It'll end. They won't keep me forever. So I need to be frugal. Are you forgetting about all the publicity? You won't struggle to find work anymore show. Hell, your old soap would take you back in a second. K paused, hoping that was the opening Shoyo needed to tell him what the hell happened in New York. Did he go talk to his old producer? They'd offered him what sounded like years of future work. Which was more than K could offer. He had no idea how long the producers would keep Shoyo on Leo's appeal. For all he knew. It would only amount to the rest of this season and then they'd move on with another storyline. Shoyo closed his eyes again. I just want to sleep. His phone beeped. But he didn't open his eyes. Can you look at that for me? K grabbed the phone off the table. You have a text. It's from Tobio. He says. 
I'll be in LA. On Friday. I'm not giving up on us. Kay's eyes widened. Wait. Is that Tobio? Your ex? Shoyo's eyes popped open and they stared at each other for a second. Shit. He finally said. Double shit. Shoyo threw the covers back and sat up. He could ruin everything. Kay grabbed the covers and urged Shoyo to lie back down. Where do you think you're going? You need to rest. Shoyo plopped back down on the bed and grabbed his forehead. You're right. I'm in no condition to. I'm not even sure where I was going. God. My head hurts. Kay held Shoyo's phone up. I could text him back for you. And tell him what? To find another sugar daddy. It wasn't like that. No? Kay said with the raise of an eyebrow. We were good. Happy. Content. Until you lost your job. Isn't money why most people divorce? Kay shrugged. Yeah. Money and sex. Tobio and I were no different. We broke in half because the financial stress was too much. He left you. Kay flatly stated. Things got difficult and he left you. Shoyo winced at that. Thanks for reminding me. He walked out on you when you were at your lowest. He's not a bad person. Stop trying to demonize him. Don't tell me it was complicated. Because that's just. Kay shook his head as he tried to find the right word. Why do you care? Shoyo asked in frustration. I'm not taking him back. At least not until we've completed our mission. Is that what you're worried about? No, Shoyo. I'm worried about you. How the hell could you ever trust him again? Shoyo shook his head. It never mattered. Tobio was incapable of doing anything wrong in my eyes. He owned me. Wow. That felt like a pretty big admission. Someone owned Shoyo Hanata? He still does. Apparently. But you're so in control with me. I can't picture you being owned by anyone. Tobio was my first love. My first everything. You're 30 years old. Get over it and find someone who loves and respects you enough to stick around when the going gets tough. Shoyo closed his eyes. Could you harass me about this later? When I can fight back? No. I have a captive audience and I'm going to tell it like it is. Kay didn't want to start another fight. But he couldn't stand the thought of Shoyo being with that man. Shoyo threw his arm over his face. God. I hate you right now. Kay softened his tone. No. You don't. You hate that I'm right. The divorced man lecturing me about love? Epic. I can lecture you because I know all about betrayal show. Who was he? Kay rolled onto his back and sighed. I don't remember his name. Shoyo's eyes popped open. I was talking about her. Not you. He slowly blinked. You're the one who cheated? It took a moment for Kay to answer. Not exactly. Shoyo propped himself up on his elbows and looked at Kay. Oh. My. God. Kay looked away. Don't judge me until you hear the story. Who says I want to hear it? Maybe I just want to judge you without knowing. Shoyo plopped back down on his back. Fine. I'm too sick to argue. Tell the story. Kay hesitated. I haven't ever told anyone the whole story. Tadashi knows bits and pieces. But not the details. It's fine. I'm delirious. So I probably won't even remember it in the morning. Kay sat up and crossed his legs. He picked at the blanket for a moment. Removing the little nubs that build up over time. Fine. I'll tell you. My wife. And God. I hate calling her that. Even though we were married for five years. Anyway. She had a big party. Which is one of the reasons I never host parties now. We were all way past drunk and she brought this guy into the bedroom and I stood there. Just staring at him. Kay squeezed his eyes shut. She played me and I fell for it. Shoyo sat up. What do you mean? God. It's so embarrassing. I was drunk as hell but I was so into him. I remember running my fingers through his long. Brown hair. It was so soft. And he was so pretty. His skin felt like velvet and his lips. Kay cleared his throat. Anyway. I knew what it meant. I'd known for a while. Years probably. That I. You know. Like men. The problem was. My wife also got her confirmation that night. Kay shook his head. She watched us. She watched the way I was with him. It hurt like hell to watch. That's what she told me the next day. Shoyo rested his hand on Kay's back. She put you in that situation so she could test you? I guess she had her suspicions. 
Maybe she saw the way I looked at men. According to you, I'm not very discreet about it. Shoyo slowly shook his head. No, you're not. Your sex eyes give you away. Kei chuckled. I'll have to work on that. He turned to Shoyo. I want what I felt that night with him. But I also want the morning after. I want the love that goes with it. And I don't want to have to hide it. I understand. Everything in that department has gone to hell for me. But I understand wanting it. Kay focused on his hands for a moment. She's going to out me. She's just waiting for the right moment. When it will hurt me the most. Shoyo looked up at the ceiling. So, let me get this straight. She's the one who brought a man to your bed. And now, she's plotting out how to mess with your career? Your life? She's probably writing a tell-all book as we speak. That's how much she hates me. You know, this may be none of my business. But your ex-wife sounds like a world-class asshole. Kay laughed. You got that right. Shoyo leaned back against the headboard and closed his eyes. A few seconds later, they popped open. Kay? Yeah? Our plan is perfect. Kay turned so he was facing Shoyo. How so? Instead of you doing this big coming out thing. Where you'll have to answer pointed questions about your past. You can just let the rumors fly and it won't matter. That woman will probably try to make a few bucks with her story. But no one will care. Because you won't care. That wasn't altogether true and Kay knew it. My mother will care. She doesn't do scandal very well. Your mother will get over it. Besides, mothers love me, especially soap-loving mothers. Kay wanted to believe it was true. He wanted to believe everything would be just fine. But he knew his mother. And where did Shoyo get off? I don't understand you. I mean, you care about what happens to me and you give me advice. But I'm not allowed to do that with you? It's not that, Shoyo admitted. It's just, I don't want to admit that the love of my life screwed me over. Because what does that say about me? The only thing it says is that you loved him with your whole heart. Not everyone can say that. Shoyo slid back down on the bed and covered his face with his arm again. And now, I'm scarred for life. Kay lay down next to him. Propped up on his elbow. Yeah, I wish I could have known you before he did this to you. I'd probably like you a lot more. Fuck you Kay. Fuck you Shoyo. Shoyo took his arm away from his face. His eyes were teary. You really don't like me? If you weren't so sick. I'd kiss you. Kay thought as he rested his hand on Shoyo's stomach. He could feel the heat from his flu-riddled body emanating through the t-shirt. Hey, you're okay? He gently rubbed circles on Shoyo's stomach. Just rest now, okay? Promise not to murder me in my sleep? Shoyo joked. Kay smiled. I'll be right here if you need me. Shoyo turned on his side and closed his eyes. He snuggled into the blankets. Thankful to be back home. Now all he needed to do was get rid of this cold. Kay watched him as he smiled to himself.